I found another webtoon that uses AI artwork. It may not shock you to find out that it sucks. Courtesy of my loyal fans hunting down awful stuff for me to review, I love you guys by the way, I have been guided to yet another AI art webtoon. This time it's a medieval fantasy furry webtoon called Wolfsbane. Currently rotting on webtoon canvas with what is easily one of the lowest rating scores I have ever seen on the platform, period. Uh, just throwing this out there, but me and my pal Dan Fan actually already reviewed an AI art webtoon on this channel, so if you'd like to see it, link in the description. For a pretty decent amount of time, I've tried to provide the benefit of the doubt on the subject matter and believe the idea that AI art isn't actually that bad. I always personally felt that AI art could be used as a tool for beginners to learn the foundations of artistic expertise. In this review, we are going to display the fact that I was completely wrong about that fact. Let's get started. The story starts off with a bunch of random generic ass deviant art tier wolf OCs with no discernible traits outside of their awful middle school fanfiction tier names and also their very, very constantly changing character designs. And just on the first page, you are immediately introduced to almost every single thing wrong about this. It only took me three pages worth of reading this comic, quote unquote, and it's so easy to see everything that is wrong. I mean, for God's sake, it doesn't take a freaking veteran comic artist or anything to see what's wrong with this single page. Good grief. Okay, where do I even begin? First of all, the characters. These generic furry OCs are constantly, and I do mean no exaggerations, literally constantly changing every single solitary panel. Because, you know, it's just one guy typing out prompts on what a character looks like, and it's super inconsistent as a result. The art style on the way characters' faces are shaped is straight up changing every single panel as well, and it's just insanely distracting. In this panel right here, this character looks like this. And then, the next panel, he looks like a freaking Disney knockoff. And it's like that every single freaking page. There's also another part in this comic where the dude gets stabbed, I guess, and when he gets attacked, it looks <laughs> it looks like he's freaking blushing, bro. L like, what the hell am I looking at? Sometimes characters' armor pieces are on and off whenever the art program kind of just wants it to be there. Sometimes the backgrounds completely switch to different vibes and tones, though I'll get into that later. Second of all, I do not approve of the way this comic was paneled. And the reason why I do not approve is because this comic literally is not paneled at all. What it is, is just someone generating images with these AI prompts and haphazardly slapping them into a bundle of pictures and then just praying that said images in question altogether can produce something resembling a cohesive narrative when the creator slaps his clunky ass dialogue in. And speaking of which, these speech bubbles trigger me to death, dude. They're colored and opaque for some reason. And the transparency makes reading the awful dialogue infuriating because the default Comic Sans font is always blending in with the over-detailed backgrounds. And let me get on that too. The backgrounds have the exact same issues as the characters, but in its own personal variety of bad. Every panel has a completely different vibe thanks to the fact that the color composition of the backgrounds are constantly changing almost every panel. It really adds to how increasingly jarring every page, quote unquote, is because it feels like the characters are talking to each other in completely different times of day, like someone's using console commands on Minecraft. So, now that we've established that this entire comic is physically painful to look at, how is the story? Well, the story is basically non-existent. TLDR, it's about a pack of personalityless anthro wolves that kill necromantic monsters and stuff. I would like to give you more detail, but I don't want to waste your brain cells because it's a droning mess of janky ass storytelling that can only be described as a point from point rebuttal of some 14 year old furry's medieval fantasy RP that they dug up off Telegram three years ago. So that is this entire webtoon in as brief of a nutshell as I can explain it. This thing is sitting on webtoon canvas and my first instinct is to say, bro, webtoon canvas is a training ground for newbie artists to hone their skills and eventually produce something great. But uh, yeah, that logic does not apply to someone like this. Someone who's not only using stolen artwork to produce a nonsensical comic, but also someone who's not even learning the basics of creating a proper comic as he goes. That's the point 
point of what I'm trying to say here. So many artists, comic artists especially, learn as they go on Webtoon Canvas. They slowly get good as their comic progresses. For example, this is a comic called Africa on Webtoon Canvas. This is what one of the first pages of Africa looks like. And this is what one of the latest pages look like. Clearly, the creator is improving by leaps and bounds, but there is no improvement to be made when you're typing out prompts to generate images and awkwardly super gluing them into a canvas in attempts to produce a story. This just sucks. There's legit zero redeeming qualities to be had here. I, I try my best to be unbiased and neutral when I make these reviews, but I was legit personally insulted by this medieval fantasy furry comic being shit out with garbage AI artwork. And the reason why is because I'm actually working on a medieval fantasy furry comic right now. And while what I'm working on easily looks shittier by default, I'm still proud of myself over this because I am, you know, actually drawing it? Like I said earlier into this video, I've been trying my best to have a very neutral opinion towards AI artwork. And after reading this trash, I have maybe a hot take? Obviously, it's not positive. So yeah, here's my probably hot take. Only real artists should be allowed to use AI art programs because we're the only goddamn people who can actually make productive and creative use of this artificial ass medium. When we use AI art programs, we use them for the sake of actually trying to improve upon what we already know and optimize our workflow based off of what we have difficulty working on due to time consumption. A perfect example of this would be here. In this webtoon called Blood Reverie, the single person or team of creators working behind this comic are in fact using AI art to get certain things done in certain chapters, such as getting this bird on this character's shoulder drawn. Webtoon artists, much like manga artists, are freaking slaves to their drawing tablet and basically have to work 24-7 in order to pump out a strip every single week and meet their quotas. And using AI art to cut out some of the fat of that very arduous weekly process is a genuine blessing. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it, it's still very awkward to look at if you see it from more than one panel because like I said, AI art is very clearly not consistent because it's just one machine generating the same image repeatedly. But regardless, this is still a good example of what I mean when I say only real artists should be allowed to use AI programs. When random ass talentless jerks make use of AI, art, you get junk like this. Fundamentally flawed nonsense that's just some dude awkwardly trying to mash his AI prompted images into a barely cohesive story. And that is why this soulless thing sucks. That's all for this one, boys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's time for the Patreon Roll Call. My $10 supporters are Art Blocked, Candid Monkey, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Kazu Cool, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, MCM 101, May Soratami, Procrastinator Dave, Skyer, Syndrant 7, and Stormy Knight. And let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well and have access to a small library of Patreon exclusive content, just catch me on patreon.com slash blacklightjack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.